Long ago, in the rich and fertile lands of North Africa, there was a city named Silena. Silena was situated next to a huge body of water, either a river or a lake, which was home to a dragon. Every day, the dragon approached the city's walls, breathed fire, and ate whoever was unlucky enough to be the closest. The citizens of Silena convened. This had gone on for long enough. The dragon was ravaging its way through the population indiscriminately. There needed to be some solution. If the dragon wasn't fed, then he would continue to kill and eat people. The citizens' assembly came to the conclusion that every day, two sheep would be given to him as food. This would relieve his hunger and allow the city to rebuild its defences. This worked until they ran low on sheep. They convened again and, left with no option, they devised a system of lottery where the name of every child in Silena, boy or girl, rich or poor, was written on a piece of paper and placed into a hat. Every day, a name was pulled from the hat and that child would win front row seats right next to the lake, right next to the dragon. Years went by with this system and the city's population dwindled as child after child was eaten. There were very few children left when the name that was pulled out was that of the king's daughter. The king begged and pleaded with his people. My daughter is my only offspring, he cried. I'll give you half my kingdom, my castles, my town, my gold and treasure. I shall split it all if she can be spared. The townspeople were unsympathetic. Oddly enough, they also considered their children to be of value. The king was flouting the rules of the lottery. Boy or girl, rich or poor, the dragon would come. The king turned to his beloved daughter with sadness in his eyes. Alas, my noble child, that foul dragon will kill you. What can I do or say? I'll never see you grow up or marry. He turned back to the people and asked that he might have her for one last week. On this request, they obliged. After that week, the daughter understood her duty. Her father dressed her in the best clothes he could afford. They shared an embrace and she left to meet her fate. She waited by the lake, tearful and in great misery. Then, over the horizon, God willed the arrival of Saint George. He hailed from Cappadocia, the plains of modern Turkey, and somehow managed to find his way all the way to North Africa. Damsel, said George, why are you crying? Tell me, I pray. The princess responded, leave, young man, or else two of us will be killed. Tell me, replied George, why do you wait by this lake outside the city walls? I won't leave you alone with all of your misery, if I can be of any assistance. George looked up at the city walls and saw many curious faces staring down at him and the princess. Why are they staring at you? The princess replied, of course, sir, I full well perceive that you are a worthy man with a hardy heart, but still, leave. Why do you want to be here with me? Take your horse, run away. George replied, Because of my faith in the Lord, I don't fear death, as heaven is all that awaits me. Now tell me, why are you crying? The princess, probably quite annoyed by this stage, explained to him the predicament, the dragon, the raiding, the city, the lottery, and George listened understandingly. I see, fear not, I'll avenge your town through the might of Jesus Christ. The princess, probably getting very irritated at this point, replied, no sir, it's better that you flee than that we both die. George, unsurprisingly, didn't go. He stood there alongside the irritated princess until the dragon began to approach. George dismounted his horse and strode towards the dragon. He praised Jesus and then readied his spear. George, with all his might, drove his spear at the dragon, giving it many a deep wound, impaling it, but leaving it still alive. By his order, the princess loosened the ribbon which tied her hair and used it to bind the dragon. Then George and the princess led the dragon into the city. Understandably, the citizens of Silena seeing the dragon walking toward the city, led by George and the princess, thought that they had lost their damned minds. Alas, this day, 
We are dead. We can't escape. George replied, The dragon can't harm you. My Lord Jesus sent me to this town to rid you of this dragon. Turn yourselves to Christ, be baptized, and I shall slay this dragon, that you can all see what faith can do for you. The people, funnily enough, were happy to oblige. They forsook their heathenism, were all baptized, and trusted wholly in God. George drew his sword and slew the dragon. The city gave George eight oxen as compensation as he left to go back home, and the king ordered the building of a beautiful church, artfully decorating it in honour of St George, the Dragon Slayer.